Thank you. Um, I feel extremely proud to be here tonight because I feel I'm not just representing the Manzanita Seed community, but representing a whole movement of change that's happening across Oakland and has been happening in Oakland while I've been here. Um, and that's been 15 years now, so it's been great to see that positive change. I'm going to start by talking a little bit about our history um, and how our campus was redesigned and that led to the creation of Manzanita Seed. And we had a, a special period. You can go ahead and, and go on the next slide. I don't know who's got that. Oh, I do. That's what this is. I'm not used to a clicker. There we go. So um, in 2004 and five, I had the opportunity to lead a team of people in planning the vision for our new school. And that team included actually many people who are, who are in the room right now, some of our community partners, um, Maria from Evenstar, Chanda from eBasie, Simone, who used to be an eBasie employee, and we stole her. She's now part of our school staff. Um, we partnered with many organizations to make sure we could reach out and represent the true diversity of our school community. Manzanita is a pretty unique school community um, where we have uh, African American, Latino, Asian, multi ethnic, and now even white students attending the school. And our neighborhood is just that diverse. And we wanted to make sure that when we redesigned the school, that we were representing all of those needs. And that's part of the reason we chose those community partners that were up there. When we opened, we also had the opportunity to expand our partnerships and start working as an arts anchor school, which really supported the vision that came out of that whole planning period. And it wasn't until uh, 2008 that we actually became a full K-5. Um, and you can notice by some of the partnerships out there that at that point we started expanding a little bit more to serve the whole child. We took on mentorships, um, counseling programs, and really started working to support the work around wellness and nutrition that's coming up in our high schools right now. <laughs> The vision that, that came out of that collaborative year was, of course, for all of our students to be academically proficient. And in just a moment, I'll, I'll talk about how low those proficiency rates really were before we began this redesign. Um, however, we also wanted to make sure that all the students in our neighborhood and in our school community had the chance to become bilingual and also to maintain their bilingualism or become trilingual if they spoke a third language at home. That was something that was really important to all of our design team members, whether or not they were African American, Southeast Asian, or Latino families. They wanted their kids to learn English, but they also knew that a second language was important. In order to reach that vision, one of the things that we focused on was integrating our families into the school community. Uh, you've heard a little bit about the family literacy program that started with an outside partnership and now has moved into the district through the CBET program. But we also wanted to support our families in becoming leaders, um, in pushing back to the school community if they felt that we weren't serving the vision of their child, and also in helping other parents develop leadership around knowing what an excellent education was and really demanding it. One of the ways that we do that is by hosting expositions of student work. Our students showcase their learning twice a year, and we have Still not 100% of our families coming out, but some classes get 100. And across the school, we're looking at a 70 to 80% turnout rate at these evening events. We also have optional cultural events for our families just to get together and get to know each other as people. That was actually one of the things our families asked for. We partner with Expeditionary Learning to support our vision for student proficiency, but also to really support the development of cultural and, culture and character in our students. We knew that simply following a curriculum that was developed by a publisher in some office somewhere else wasn't going to do that. So our teachers have been trained in how to backwards map, how to plan their own curriculum. They base a lot of their units or expeditions on social studies and science standards, and they go very into depth with those. They plan service learning, field work, and excursions that are linked to what they're learning. Uh, what you see right there is actually our third graders out at Coy Coy Coyote Hills uh, Regional Park. And that's become an annual trip of them during their study of the Ohlone native people so they can see how the Ohlone lived in the past. At the same time, we have local and um, current Ohlone residents that come in and talk to our students so they also learn what the Native American experience is like in the present and how cultures have changed and shifted over the time. Another important part of our curricular program is using a balanced literacy approach that allows us to differentiate our reading and our writing for our students and also to make sure that literacy is not just taught 
for reading's sake, but our literacy is integrated across the curriculum and into other content areas. One of the fundamental principles that our school is founded on is really seeing the diversity of our neighborhood and our school community as a strength and believing that if we include that diversity and, um, in all settings that everyone is stronger. When we went through our design process, we went through a, a process called asset mapping and we looked around our community to see what its strengths were. We felt one of the strengths was the ethnic diversity of our community. We felt one of the strengths was the linguistic diversity of our community. We felt that our African American students particularly were not getting that linguistic diversity because of the way the bilingual programs had been set up previously. And that was one of the reasons that we went to this 50-50 model of bilingual immersion. All of our students have two teachers. They have one teacher who speaks only in English to them and one who speaks only in Spanish. What an outcome of that was that we didn't realize was that it meant that teacher collaboration has to happen because when the teachers are sharing the students, they really need to be working together as well. In addition, we included our special education students in the regular population as much as possible using a learning center based model. And again, an outcome of that was that by integrating the students and putting them together to share their strengths, we ended up integrating our faculty our general education staff and our special education staff work together on a regular basis to support the students. So one of our teachers uh, really wanted to share with you right now just a few of his words and I'm going to have him come up um, because this is an incredible outstanding teacher who's been in Oakland for years and wanted to let you know from his perspective why SEED was special. Hi. I'm Mark Zucker, and uh, in my 19 years of Oakland, I've uh, sought out and found beauty and brilliance in abundance everywhere I've gone. Unfortunately, it wasn't always consistent or integrated or disseminated to others, and that was very frustrating for me. And in fact, I found myself at one point at a school where I honestly felt that best practices were, I was denied the opportunity to bring best practices and collaborate with my colleagues and truly integrate my curriculum. And then I heard about this school, and I read that plan, and I got in touch with the principal. And you know, good teaching works by attraction, not compulsion. And I was attracted to this plan because of the big ideas. Like our students are attracted to learning by the big ideas that underlie our curriculum. And those big ideas of integrating skills, knowledge, and character, and allowing and encouraging collaboration and best practices. Um, I've transferred to this site, and I tell you, I've died and gone to heaven. And I just wanted to say thank you to the people who did the hard work to make this plan happen, and the systems and people that allowed it to be developed, to have time to develop, and grow itself. And it is a work in progress. And I'm just unbelievably proud to be a part of it. Um, I tell you, the students at our school are peaceful, loving, creative, contributing citizens. We've adopted the local creek, we go camping, we uh, perform our living museum for the community. The kids are truly engaged with learning. They're excited, they are lifelong learners, and that's my goal. So that's where I want to be. And other teachers who live by big ideas and want to impart them will be drawn to great schools like this. Thank you. So I actually wanted to jump right to this math slide because despite the camping, or maybe I should say because of the camping and the field trips and the integration and everything Mark talked about, last year 100% of the students in his fifth grade class were proficient in mathematics. So I think that really, that's pretty phenomenal. Um, and, and that includes students who, are, who actually were fully included from our special education program in that fifth grade class. So it's really tremendous. Um, last year was also the year that we were recognized for extreme growth in mathematics. We grew by 31 percentage points of our students and proficient and advanced. We had the most growth for African American students of any school in Oakland. And we also had the most growth for socioeconomically or Title I eligible students of any school in Oakland. And I truly believe it's because of that, that rich education that we were just talking about. Um, at the same time, that is also why we were then nominated for that Title I Closing the Achievement Gap Award. And I actually even had to email the state back. I said, really? 
um, explained to me how, how you did this. And they said they looked at everyone who made API, they looked at everyone who made AYP, and then they looked at who had made the most progress in closing the gap between different subgroups, between students who were living um, in below the poverty line and students that came from families that had enough between English language learners and English only students between e different ethnic groups um, and and that was really uh, why we got that award and I'm still kind of in awe of it myself <laughs> to be honest so at the same time we've made really steady growth in our English language arts um, this last year we got up to 55 percent and we made our AYP targets and again, remember, this is why our students, while our students at the same time are learning to read and write in Spanish. And what I didn't mention when we looked at the math slide was that those students all received their math instruction only in Spanish all the way up until third grade um, and still reached the rate of 73% proficient in advanced school-wide. So again, I could talk about our programs all day. Uh, it really would not be possible without the staff that's listed there. And I put them on the bottom because the staff really is supporting our students. And, and that's the visual I wanted you to see. Um, one of the unique things about our school is that our after school program coordinator is actually part of our school staff. I believe she's only one of only two people in the school district that is on the school staff and not outsourced to an outside agency. We do work closely with agencies like Learning for Life, like eBase, like Opera Piccola to get a full program, but it's been a blessing to have our program coordinator on staff with us um, so that we can have that continuity of the program and the real integration of academics and enrichment throughout the school day. Again, I just want to call your attention to who our students are. Uh, we're a small school. We're only about 240 students. Again, we have a high population of special ed students, English language learners, Title I students. I, I wanted to point out for you all that we have seven students on an inter-district transfer because I thought that was pretty phenomenal and shows you what creating a unique vision can do for families not just in Oakland but families outside of Oakland as well. Um, at the same time, we're really proud of serving our neighborhood school, our neighborhood population, and you can see that by the demographic chart up there that represents right up there on the top the ethnic diversity of our student population. Um, and I think what you don't see is that that light blue is uh, multi-ethnic. I don't know where that square is. Um, and then all of the multiple languages that are spoken by our students who are becoming bilingual and or trilingual. Uh, so in closing, I, I wanted to actually take this opportunity, like Mark, to, to be thankful for the conditions that have made this possible. Um, I was once a teacher in Oakland. I was a teacher at Manzanita Elementary School and was given the opportunity to work for a year to develop this vision um, and to start small at our school. We started as a K-2, and we were able to, to, to grow this positive school culture. Um, I don't think that there's any way we could do this without the families who are drawn to our school and without the support and the leadership development that we've given them to enable them to continue to push us in growing the vision. Um, and there's plenty of conversations that have happened both in committee meetings and offline where our families have helped make that happen. Um, and again, one of the things that we're really most proud of is that we're implementing a curriculum that's designed by our teachers, you know, based on the, the core adopted curriculum and the state standards, but that's also providing an opportunity for all of the students in our community to become not just academically proficient, but also bilingual, and ultimately to learn how to live together. So thank you again.